All right, I think we have Mr. MTC ready to go. He is the Renaissance man of the Jeff Santos Show, and he is live from Seattle. Mark Taylor Canfield, live. Barely, but go ahead. I think I can at least at least hear a little bit. Maybe I'll have to turn up the volume. <laughs> can we turn up the volume, uh, Zach? I can hear him a little bit. There you go. A little bit louder. Is that better? That's a little better. One more, one more level. Take it to 11. Yeah, 11. Yeah, <laughs> you know. that's right. It's better at 11. All right, Mark. I think sound- I think you're. Go ahead. That sounding better. If you, you could pump it up a little bit more, as you know, we'll do a little Elvis Costello and pump up the volume. Maybe move the, maybe if I move the laptop closer to me. Uh, I, check, I guess. Check, check, test it. Is that better? All right. I, I think so. Um, uh, Zach, if you can hear him better than I can, go right ahead and, and just let me know that. I can hear him. I can do the interview. I just hope everybody else can listen to it. So, well, man. Otherwise, I can reboot the program again if you need to. All right. So I they're telling like me that you're, you're all the way to 11 on their board. So. Hey, whatever you can do on your side, MTC, to, to pump it up or to speak louder. Maybe you can just speak louder. <laughs> Check. One, two, three. Can you hear me now? There you go. I love that. I love that. All right. Sound like you're on stage. Uh, so, hey, man, it's, it's been a long time. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to play you my, my intro. There you go. There you go, man. It's a, it's a little Hendrix reminder. Hey, you know, one of the things that, you know, we're talking about, we just spoke with uh, Marge Baker over at People for the American Way, their VP, and, you know, the role that he had, you know, the late, great Norman Lear. You know, the music and your city itself, I mean, from, you know, Jimi Hendrix to Kurt Cobain, I mean, you had a, a major influence um, on the politics. And, of course, you know, you take into that consideration yourself personally. Talk to me a little bit about that because – you know, you played a little riff there from Hendrix. Uh, you know, it's it's so important. And of course, Hendrix is an African American. You know, back in in the late '60s, you know, that was kind of unheard of. You know, it was sort of a separate you know category. You got to go in that bucket, Mr. Hendrix, not not in that one. Um, talk to me a little bit about that because he doesn't get the same recognition these days as as maybe he did you know 30 years ago. Well. Uh, by the way, I'm going to do an audition for NBC's The Voice this month, so uh, wish me Oh, luck. are you? But, uh, Very good. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I got my fingers crossed. But here's the thing. Uh, the boss, you know, of course. Oh, by the way, congratulations to uh, the New England Patriots for beating the Steelers yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It's been a really <laughs> good year. So that was yeah, nice that's, to see. That's all right. Yeah. We, we want a high pick. That's what we want over here in Boston. Yeah, I know the, the bar is kind of low, but hey, that was great. And the Huskies, yeah, we go won a game. Huskies, number two in the nation. Yeah. We're going to be packed yeah. in. We're packed home champs. We're going to the <laughs> Sugar Bowl. This is going to be great. It's a great year for Seattle sports. But back to the music. The boss was on stage, right, with a T-shirt yes. that said, let's keep, Trump, let's keep America Trumpless. And it went viral. I mean, it went awesome. Viral. I have it saved on my computer. I use it quite often. So, yeah, when somebody <laughs> like the boss, Mr. Bruce Springsteen, speaks out, Mr. I mean, Bruce. everybody listens. It's very important that uh, musicians take a stand, you know, and I've done the same thing here in Seattle. Unfortunately, we're losing our 10 year so- uh, Seattle Socialist City Council member, Shama Sawan, with the social. Yeah, very Party. sad to hear. She's gonna, yeah, she's going to work with Workers Strike Back, though, which is a very activist labor organization. They're going to help organize uh, Amazon employees and Starbucks and all sorts of stuff. So stay tuned. She's not going off the national stage, that's for sure. But here in well, Seattle, good. I mean, we've always been a little political. By the way, the punk scene, what was that about? A lot of it was very political. So there's a whole history. That's right. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. In Julian's in a punk band. You know, the, everything that you do on stage, in a sense, is is uh, political. If you wear a flag or you wear a peace sign or, you know, whatever you, whatever you present yourself as is making a statement to the world. So I think it's really important that musicians remember that they need to write more Bob Dylan kind of songs about what's going there you on go. today. And really... Call out our political and corporate leaders in your music and talk about it on stage. 
and wear a T-shirt, you know, that expresses your opinion because it really <laughs> does make a huge difference. And without politics, I mean, my music would all be about, you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll. So I, I would much rather <laughs> talk about politics sometimes in my music, although not all the time. Healthier for you anyways, at least to a certain extent, yeah. you know, yeah, you know, it's good. It's, we have a whole history of that here. So you, you know, do. I think that and I think it's I think it's important to the to the democracy here in the United States. I mean, you know, so much of history, you know, um, in in America, can, you know, can be told through through the great music. You mentioned Bob Dylan. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it goes it goes deep into the heart of uh, of African-Americans, uh, you know, in, in in the turn of the century through jazz and blues and, and of course, you know, you know, right into, into Jimi Hendrix uh, time period. I, I, I must tell you, I, I think it is uh, so important as we're talking about the issue of entertaining. And you mentioned the, the you know, the Trumpless uh, America, which would be the great thing for the country, uh, for the world, frankly, uh, because, you know, we are the 800 pound gorilla in the world. And, you know, it is to me, an important piece, but, you know, to inspire people. I mean, I, when the first time I saw you too, you know, I mean, I was hooked. The people were telling you, this is like a religious experience. You know, if you're, you know, very, very religious, you can understand that comment. If you've never been to a church or a synagogue or, or a mosque, you know, maybe you don't understand that. But I mean, when, you know, when, when you hear Bono, you know, you know, talk about, you know, um, Sunday, Bloody Sunday, you can understand that. And of course, the, the great pain that people in Ireland and Northern Ireland went through, uh, you know, it's, it's to me, um, it's really important. You understand that better than, no, than anybody, Mark. Yes, I was tweeting yesterday. Yoko Ono follows me on social media. So thank you, Yoko. That's right. She's got something really positive and good to say. But I was responding to something that people were saying as a comment on her post, which was, that she does a great job of keeping John Lennon's legacy alive. And when I was a teenager, John Lennon was my hero. I mean, let me tell you, oh, yeah. I mean, his politics, his music, he made such a strong impression on me as a young musician that today I, I write music and I think about him sometimes. Of course, I also think about Jimi Hendrix. Uh, and by the way, speaking of a spiritual experience, I mean, last night there was a, a private party uh, after Art Walk in Pioneer Square and my friend's band played. And right behind them is a huge portrait, a painting of Jimi Hendrix. And on the other side of the room is a huge painting of Elvis Presley and another one of Aretha Franklin. And, you, you know, you name it. It's like those uh, those musicians have influenced all of us, whether we like it or not, in some cases, you know, because they've infiltrated our culture and saturated our culture so much. But, you know, it is kind of it is a spiritual experience when you go to a rock concert in Seattle. I mean, I do feel a little bit like I've been playing hockey with Don Cherry after, you know, partying all night. With the fans, but <laughs> it, it's worth it. That's the rock and roll lifestyle. You just have to be able yeah, to it is. three hours. I learned that as a journalist, too. I mean, three hours of sleep is fine. You know, no problem. I got my green tea going, you know, as long as I have some Mountain Dew or green tea. I wouldn't recommend the Mountain Dew. It's probably really bad for you. <laughs> but, uh, during emergency, I never, really, I could never really deal with that. I was more of a Sprite guy myself. Uh, I, I couldn't deal with the Mountain Dew. I don't know. It's, it's the bad. Well, you know, it has a lot of caffeine in it, but my problem is so much sugar. I mean, any kind of soda these days. In Seattle, we have a kind of a luxury tax on what they call sugary drinks. So anything that's mostly sugar, there's an added tax. And some of that goes to provide affordable housing for folks who live in the city. So it's a sin tax, I guess, right? It's like, oh, if you're going to drink Mountain Dew, you should pay for it, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, drink something healthy, dude. It's kind of like the message they're telling you. Like they're also telling people kind of, you know, they're building more and more bicycle lanes and they're not doing anything to make the traffic better, which is kind of their message to saying, well, then get out of your damn cars, you know, take public transit, <laughs> yeah. walk, get a bicycle, be healthy. That's kind of their attitude downtown anyway. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Let, you know, let me let me ask you this. you got, it's got a couple of minutes left here uh, in this segment. I, I must tell you, so Mark. I just want to say oh, it's so, so great, great to be with you, man. We're going to be doing this longer, longer segments, and uh, in the in the in the coming uh, in the coming weeks and months, we really miss you, man. It's been a long, long time. Um, I, I want to ask you this: um, when you get out on stage, you know, when when uh, you play there in the great Seattle clubs, um, you know, it, it must be it must be both a thrill. But you do you do a lot of interviews with us and a lot of places around the. Uh, around the world, our, our good friend Hartman and company. Um, but, you know, that that is a special thing. You know, having been on stage myself before a live audience, 
you know, just introducing people, frankly, um, or making a speech. Um, you know, that's that's something. Give us a little understanding of what that means, because you're pouring it from the heart and it comes out as a song. Yeah, it's very cathartic. You know, if something in the news is bothering you, like I just wrote a new song called Glamour, which is kind of like, you know, too much money, too much bling, too many singers singing the same old thing. You know, I, I'm yeah. a little bit tired of the, the uh, MTV style uh, music business right now. But uh, yeah, it's it's a great cathartic, cathartic experience. You know, I think artists of all kinds experience that. My friend broke up with his girlfriend and then did a painting that helped him get through it. You know, we're all trying wow. to express ourselves. So, the way we live and what our lives are like. And when you get on stage, it's a moment, it allows you to sort of forget all that for a while. And it's really nice. And it's much healthier than doing drugs or something like that. I mean, I, I suppose, you know, skydivers might experience that a little bit or something. There are a lot of people who do things like surfing that kind of put you in a different state of mind. And being on stage is like that, but it's a very intimate experience. And if people are your fans, I just had a drummer last night say, Mark, you're a great guitarist and singer. You know, I'd, I'd be honored to work with you. When you have people like that in the, in the audience, you know that they're hanging on every word you say. So you better say something uh, productive. You better say something that will uh, be proactive and activate people because otherwise you're missing a great chance. They're, they're hoping that you're going to give them some kind of um, information that will be helpful to them besides just your music. I think it's important that musicians talk to their audience. I know there's a lot of bands, you know, the, we call them the Schuster bands, you know, who never talk to the audience. They just, you know, play their songs and go home. I think, you know, you need to connect with them somehow and you need to like, you do. Share yeah. And en enough of people who just, uh, you know, go into the studio and, and do an album and can't play a, a, a lick when they're alive. So that's, that's the, uh, that's the way we don't not want to go. And unfortunately there's been a lot of that. Yeah. Hey, Emma, I got to run my friend, uh, Mark Taylor Canfield, check him out on YouTube. Check him out. Uh, if you're in Seattle at the local clubs, and uh, it's always great to see you, my friend. Hopefully, we'll get back uh, to a regular visit with you weekly uh, in the coming weeks, uh, in the new year. Yes. I, I have a new article at Daily Coast, and they can also read some of my stuff at Truth Out. So I've been busy. I just uh, haven't been on your show because, you know, yeah. we call it Head Limitations. So uh, great to be with you. You all did that. Huskies. Yeah. Look Huskies. forward to it, man. Nope. Peace, man. Nope. All the best. That's right. That's uh, Mark Taylor Canfield, live from Seattle. You know, we went from uh, Washington, D.C. with Marge Baker uh, to Seattle. Now we're going to go to an unknown location uh, somewhere in the heart of Tennessee uh, because our next guest is a uh, fantastic baseball historian. His latest book is called Coach of a Lifetime, uh, the story of Lewis Cook Jr., legendary high school football coach, but he's, he's a baseball guy. And the best little baseball town in the world is one of the other great jewels of Galen White. Uh, and he is uh, going to talk a little bit today um, about um, how civil rights, the uh, whole movement with Jackie Robinson and, uh, of course, uh, Artie Wilson, Singles and Smiles, how the uh, uh, how Artie Wilson.